and welcome back to Bloomo Home and Garden. Today is a fun project day. We are building a chicken coop. My name is Kim, if you are new here, and this is Bloomo Home and Garden, where I love to share all the projects we have on our little homestead with you. So please say hi in the comment and like the video if it's informative for you. And if you have not yet subscribed, please do that. That really helps out our channel, and we really like that. Thank so let me explain what we have going on today. We are out here in the chicken run, and we have a regular chicken coop, and it is all fine and dandy. That's where most of the chickens sleep at night but we always feel the need to have an additional chicken coop it is great to have just a small coop on hand for several reasons you might want to use one if you're raising chickens number one is a great setup to have if you have a sick chicken if you have a chicken that you've just gotten and you want to introduce to your flock you don't just want to bring home a chicken and put it in with your flock because that chicken could be sick or it could have parasites so you want to quarantine that chicken for 10 days to 14 days to make sure that it's not going to harm the rest of your flock. You also may have a broody chicken or a chicken with babies and you want her to be able to have space and explore. So there's always a good reason to have a second setup. Now we did have one, it just wasn't working out for us. There were so many issues that we had with it. So today we are going to try and build our very own. Now I don't have plans for this. I'm just going to dive in and try to wing it. I have made a little sketch. I've gone and measured everything and hopefully this is going to go well. So I just want to share with you and bring you along and show you how we're going to build our secondary coop. Okay, so this is where our other coop was and it's just a little run we built because if we have a sick chicken or we have babies, we do want them to be able to have a place to roam around. The other one sat on the ground back there in the corner and we've already demolished it and I don't have footage for that, but let me show you a few of the pieces. It wasn't very big. This is the front and this was the front door. This is the back because it kind of went on a lean. Um, the front was taller than the back and the sides are behind this piece of wood. And then over here we have the roof and over here we just have some two by fours and this was the bottom. Now you can see this floor, it was already starting to rot out and it was really hard to clean because not only being completely on the ground, the frame of the building was sitting on the bottom. So what happens when you go to clean it, your shovel just hits these two by fours around the frame and you just can't get the stuff out. So we don't want it sitting on that. We don't want it sitting on the ground. We want it easier to clean. So we have all these pieces here just because we may want to utilize some of this wood. You know, we broke it down. Uh, some of the wood is so good. So, you, you know, I'm always a big fan of reduce, reuse, recycle. And if we can use some, that's great. Now this coop also did not have any proper ventilation. And so when they were in there, they were suffocating and then also there were no windows so we're going to add a lot of those things that a coop should have for proper health of your chicken all right so i'm just going to give you a quick run over of some of the tools we're going to be using we're going to be using the skill saw and we're going to be using a drill now i like to drill my projects together with screws i just think they last longer and if I want to take something apart it's easier later and I'm going to be using these outdoor screws right here they are the Brit by Bright exterior from Lowe's this is where we got these and they will come with its own drill bit so you don't have to worry about changing it out this is what they look like they're exterior they're coated so this is a better way to go rather than just regular screws and then um, of course we're going to do a Tape measure, pencil, hammer, of course. And I have a level here. So a uh, crowbar and another hammer here. And of course, I'm gonna be using the square here to make nice straight lines for my cuts. And that's what we have going on. So we're gonna jump in and get started. We're just gonna get started with making our cuts for our frames for our top and our bottom. These are going to be our bottom and the top frame of the actual house itself.
ready to assemble the frame, both the top and the bottom frames, to the legs and the four corner posts. And I just have to say thank you so much to my grandson Aiden who spent the summer with me and if you noticed I wasn't really posting a lot of videos over the summer. We were just hanging out and having a great time and that was just so much fun but he is a builder he loves to build and every morning he wakes up and he says grandma what are we building today if I have a project you can guarantee he's gonna be a part of it he just loves building I love having him along and being that influence in his life to help him have something that he can do when he's older and fall back on and it's just great to have those experiences when you're young so you can carry with them with you into an adulthood. Both our top and bottom are now secured to the outside frame. We're going to stand it up and we're going to continue to make supports for the walls. We're going to do two supports in each wall and of course the floor. Lucky for us, we found this plywood already cut and it was, looks like it was going to be the perfect size. With a little bit of maneuvering, we refigured out that while it was a good size, it wasn't perfectly square. And in that case, you try the next best thing, which is plan B. simply took it out and we flipped it over and when we slid it back in, voila, it was a perfect fit. Now that we were happy with the fit, we just took some nails and secured it in place. good and solid and we're getting ready to do the wall supports but we thought now would be the best time to go ahead and lay down our linoleum I just put down new linoleum in the coop and I had this big piece left over they actually gave me a large chunk because it was the end of the roll and they just went ahead and kept going and gave me all that was on the roll so I have this I think it's 12 by 5 and since this is 4 by 4 essentially we have plenty to go ahead and do this floor. We're going to do it now so it's easy to cut and not have to cut around all those extra wall supports. great we're just going to staple it down that's all I do and then when I want to replace it I can but this coop isn't going to get used quite as often as the other coop the regular coop that we have because this is just going to be a part-time coop so we're not going to have to replace the floor as often and I really only replace the floor every three or four years so I think we're good for now
original plan, I had these four bys cut and these were gonna be the underneath suspension. And then we went ahead and when we started building, we just started using those eight foot two by fours. Well, after consideration and after I conferred with the builder and the family, we realized that I do want it a lot sturdier and we can use all of these to add extra support. So we went ahead and cut those legs off and we're gonna use these four by fours for our bottom portion. Now you can see that we added those four by fours, how much sturdier it is, and we've even dropped it down to the original 32 inches. So very happy with that. I'm glad that we actually went through and did that one. So here we are friends at the end of day one on our cruise build and it's really turning out nice even though I didn't have designer plans it's really coming together well and it looks great here we are day two of our coop build and today we're gonna to be working on several different things we're gonna be adding in any cross support that we need to add in we're also going to be working on finding windows and doors. I want to use as much as I can from things that we just have on hand or can make. And speaking of, I found this old door and I need to remove the back and somebody screwed it like a dozen times. So it has a lot of screws that have to come out, but I'm going to cut down the back a little bit and uh, this I think is what we're going to use for the door for our coop. And I have a door that to went to an old cabinet and I'm actually thinking about repurposing that for a window but that too is going to need some work so today should be filled with fun and challenges on our day two of our coop build. The guys are going to get started on the walls and while they're working on that I am going to put together my window frame. Now this was two cabinet doors and each end of each door was broken so I'm using both doors to make one window frame. So I have some work to do to kind of splice it back together and make it work. So I'm going to get started on that and make it work. nesting box. Well the builder and the family convinced me to make it just as big as the coop. In reality, like I said, we're probably only going to have less than six chickens in here at any time. Most of the times let's be one. Um, if it's a mama, she probably won't be laying um, unless she's sitting on her nest. So in reality, we probably only need one box, but I think it would just look better and in the future if I wanted to pass this on to one of the kids who really love raising chickens then of course they can use it also so we're going to go ahead and add on a three box nesting area and so these pieces right here are going to come out here and so this will be our floor this will be the top where our roof will come down so this will be a fun addition and we're just making this a foot tall a foot depth and each box will be about a foot wide
Now I'm just going to get to work on my barn door that we're using for the coop door. And I removed all the screws and I'm measuring the two back pieces that held the four pieces together. And I'm going to go ahead and measure them out and make my cuts. Now what I did was I measured to see where these would clear the opening in the door frame of the coop. And that way the door will fit snugly against the coop. Once I had that measurement, I made my cuts. Now I'm just reattaching the two back pieces and this will be all finished and ready for a coat of paint. Time to make the cuts for the windows and the doors and this is so exciting. This window is a nice size window. It's going to be plenty big enough to let in lots of sunlight and lots of fresh air into the coop. The first part of the coop window frame has had plenty of time to dry and so now I'm working on the second part so I'll be able to put it all together and give it a coat of paint also. I love to paint and I was just in such the zone when I was painting that I totally forgot to film the roof supports and the roof going on. But here it is, the roof is on and now it's time to cover the roof with paper and shingles. I'm going to cut the hardware cloth. Hardware cloth is the best material to use on coops because it makes it really difficult for predators to get through. Chicken wire is easy to manipulate for predators, but hardware cloth is not. I am cutting the pieces for the window and the vent covers that you will see later. I'm 
using this black Rust-Oleum spray paint in satin. Spray painting your hardware cloth makes it disappear and easier to see in and out of the window. So I always like to spray paint my hardware cloth over windows and vents. Speaking of vents, I'm getting ready to cut the vent holes in the coop. These will be positioned at the top of the coop where the air won't actually be directly on the chickens, but allow for fresh air to pass in and out of the coop. I have positioned these across from each other, one on the back, one on the front, and this will allow the air to flow through the coop. I've even positioned the coop so that the way our wind comes most often will come through the back and out the front, creating that fresh air exchange, which is essential for the health of your chickens. yet another piece of the decking that we got from our friends and it looks like it would make great steps. It's just missing one step, so one step coming up. This was such a fun project. We had such a great time putting it together, our little coop. We just love it. It turned out so cute and it's going to serve its purpose so well. It's plenty big enough. It's up off the ground. They have safety where they can go. When it's raining outside, there is plenty of room and plenty of ventilation and sunlight. This turned out so well. Let me know in the comments what your favorite part of the coop is. much for watching. Be blessed, be safe, and we'll see you soon.